everybody. I'm Rachel. And I'm Chris. And we're the Faint Divinities, a channel dedicated to playing and talking about Daggerheart uh, and sometimes other things like tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're definitely going to talk a little bit tonight about Daggerheart, uh, but we're primarily focused on talking about Gen Con, um, which just happened. Guys, I don't know if y'all have put two and two together, but two weeks ago today, if you got there on Wednesday, was when you got to Gen Con. I know some of you, some of us drive if we're closer and stuff, but like me and Chris, we got there Wednesday night, so it was like now that we were landing. Um, I so, miss it already. Isn't it crazy that it's been two weeks? Oh man, yeah. Um, so kind of we, sad. yeah, it was very sad. We have some special guests tonight, though, and if you've been in the audience, you've known that I've been toggling some stuff. But um, but for the purposes of actually doing a video for YouTube and everything, uh, could we do some introductions? Of um, first, Sean Critic, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Sean Winningham, and I go by Crit Hit the Giant online. So if you Look on all the social medias. You could just look up at Crit Hit the Giant. Um, and I also have a website called CritHitTheGiant.com as well, where I um, do just kind of a bunch of articles about TTRPGs and games in general and stuff like that. Mostly it's about tabletop role playing games as well, too. So, yeah. Yeah, and guys, we're going to, if I can figure it out, which I should be able to, I'm a professional, right? No, I'm not. Um, I don't get paid for this. But if uh, if I can figure it out, I'm going to share some stuff uh, that Sean actually took of Gen Con tonight. If you do not following Sean, pro tip for conventions, he's the guy who you want his shots because he is six foot six, inside joke, 17 feet tall, but six foot six. Um, so like me at my 5'3", trying to like film in the crowd it's mostly people's backs but yours are great <laughs> i thought initially i was like whoa he got like aerial views and then i was like no he's, he's the one who truly yeah, saw yeah. drink on yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, I mean, I was still holding it up, but like not by much. Yeah, with your arm. Like yeah. I've seen two good shots of Gen Con. One of it is like, you know, uh, what are the, oh my God, I'm blanking on the word. Chris, help me out. Drone, drone, got it. I didn't even know. Oh, drone shots. Oh, yeah. Ladies, yeah, but... you could do it all your own. Either drone <laughs> shots or Sean's work. So go follow Crit Hit the Giant. Um, Same thing. But then also <laughs> we you. have another friend of the channel that we made at Gen Con. Go ahead, Jordan. Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Jordan Michael Whidbey. I'm JM Dubs on a lot of the internet. I also co-produce a uh, D and D actual play under the show name Dice Jailers. Uh, we're about to get working on our second season, uh, so if you keep eyes on stuff, maybe in a couple months a new show will start. If not, there's like eighty something episodes of past stuff. Uh, if you enjoy my energy and want to see more of it for some weird reason, because he's uh, I'm just. I'm just around. I'm I'm an actor. That's it. <laughs> like, uh, I will let Chris talk about this a little bit later. But because I am the just verbal babe and everything, I will let you know that sh that Chris, who we're gonna get into this later, he was in the main demo hall and everything, and right next to Jordan, and he came back like night one, and he was like, "There is this guy." He is right behind me. He is good. He's everybody. I keep hearing like gasps and stuff. And I like look back and it's this guy. He's like, he's awesome. We need to be his friends. <laughs> this table is really lit. And Jordan's such a like jolly person that like the moment I showed up in Gen Con, I think he was the first person I interacted with. Like just hit me on the shoulder and was like, hey, what's up, man? And like just instant like, Yo, friends. you right here at the yeah. table? Let's do this. <laughs> we were running games back to back like the whole Gen Con. It was so fun. Yeah. So, so thank you guys so much for showing. I know both of you it was like last minute stuff, but I, this this kind of feels like Gen Con a little bit to me because it's such a communal thing. So we're just like, you want to do some stuff, and your friend nerds are like, I might fuck around. Yeah. I might fuck around. I think I texted Jordan. He's like, let's do some shenanigans. He's immediately yeah. down. Like <laughs> we shenaned, and now we're shenaning again. You know, shenan again. Like, so okay, just real quick, right off the top, and I, I'm gonna get you guys in. I have an agenda. I am a project manager by trade, but um, I do for any of you. Oh, hi, Squire. Happy whatever Wednesday. I know it's a crazy day, but anyway. Um, so for those of you who uh 
who follow and stuff, I think in this echo chamber that we exist in tabletop RPG, we assume that everybody just knows what Gen Con is. But um, I talk to people and they're like, you what? <laughs> you went to a convention for board games and the face... I actually... So remember, guys, Chris is not... Chris is a nerd, but he's not exactly my area of nerd. I had to pull him by force. I need a tabletop. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> at the beginning of the year, I was like, hey, I really want to go to Gen Con this year. And he was like, cool, what's Gen Con? I was like, it's a convention. And he was like, sick. And he was like, where is it? And I was like, Indianapolis. <laughs> and I was like, let's not go. <laughs> yeah. It's vacation time to go anywhere else. <laughs> he had never heard of Gen Con. So I think it's I think it's really valuable to kind of explain just right off the top what Gen Con is. So Gen Con is the largest tabletop gaming convention in North America. Uh, tabletop specifically. So uh, if you're familiar with things like Comic Con, you're kind of there. You're in the right space. Um, except for the, the key difference is that Gen Con specifically caters to tabletop. So your card games like Magic the Gathering, your board games like Heroes of Barcadia or Settlers of Catan, all of that stuff, um, your tabletop role-playing games, Dungeons and Dragons, shout out 50th D&D, you know, uh, Daggerheart. Um, uh, I think Stormlight Archives was there. Could the Cosmere RPG was there, you know, um, all of that. Plus sometimes cosplay, pop references and stuff. Um, as kind of prep for this, I did a little bit of research because I was like, why is it called Gen Con? Do I do any of you guys know? Chris, I told you, don't you? Do you guys know? Sean, go, go, tell us. I I, I do, yeah. So it was originally hosted in uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And it was there for the longest time until I think they, they moved to Indianapolis in 2007. So, yeah. That is incredible. The <laughs> fact that you knew this, listen, you know that after, right? again, yeah. <laughs> Sean, coming from the press, knows the answer. Yeah, that's 100% true. Um, so Gen Con started, and in its first year, I think 1968, I think, um, Gary Gygax, think so. who, yeah. Yeah, who is co-founder, co sorry, co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons, he wanted mm -hmm. to set up a little convention, so he created it was a little bit funny, tongue in cheek, the Geneva Convention because of the obvious joke there. Yeah. We're nerds, guys. Um, and so he set the yep. Geneva Convention up, um, and it was it was there next to Lake Geneva, right? So um, mm -hmm. then, in many iterations, it finally moved to Indianapolis. So it's this huge. It is. <laughs> it's hard to explain how big Gen Con is because it's massive. It's, you know, I think we broke yeah. records this year, like mm -hmm. 71,000? 70, over 71,000. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Cool. Um, and, yeah. 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 So, but, but that brings me to the, the second part of that, because again, people who don't know about Gen Con, when you tell them it's in Indianapolis, I think like Chris, their response is why? And <laughs> I think think after going there though you can see why when you get there and chris do you want to talk about your experience a little bit as a newcomer yeah yeah as a newcomer not knowing what it is at all and just diving right in being a game master running games and everything um uh yeah gen con is like Hard to even really describe. I feel like when you look at videos, because I would look at videos a little bit before, you know, coming up to this, none of them do it justice. Like, it's so much more massive in scale than you're, you can anticipate. Like, 71,000 for the convention, but there's also, like, kind of, we were mentioning it being in Indianapolis, um, the whole city is Gen Con. Like, every building in downtown is, like, Gen Con adjacent. When you go to the hotel lobbies, like the people working there have like elf ears. They're giving you like dice in your like hotel rooms and stuff. Uh, at the airports, like going to uh, Phoenix Airport here, when we got on our plane, every single shirt was like a Dungeons and Dragons shirt. People behind <laughs> me were talking about spell slots. I was like, I, I don't, I can't find like five people to play board games like in my regular life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go there and you're like, wow, this is way bigger than uh, I thought it was for sure. 
Yeah, it's um, it's so to me, I, and I don't know that this is true, but Chris is originally from LA, um, and so, and we are trying to get back there and everything. But that's one thing about like in LA, it doesn't matter how big your stuff is, you know, you cannot yeah. take over the whole city with your thing because it's Los Angeles. So it, it can, it can be 140,000 people like SDCC is San Diego Comic Con, but it's, it's still only going to represent 5%, 10% of the city's heart beat and pulse when you get to indie, though, which again, guys, if you're new to it, most people call it indie. Um, it, it's it is the entire city. It's everywhere. Board games. People are playing cards on the sidewalk outside of the bars downtown. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's so I think very that immersive, yeah. that's part of it, right? That's part of it is that you have a very special thing when you go to Gen Con indie because it is. It is just, as far as the eye can see, love for this space, understanding you. It feels like summer camp on the biggest scale. <laughs> <Sometimes>. <laughs> Jordan, what do you feel about it? We haven't really got your... Yeah. You know? Yeah, so this was also my first Gen Con. But, like, I live in Seattle, so I'm regularly going to, like, Emerald City. And uh, sometimes I go to PAX. Usually I go to SakuraCon because I'm a big anime nerd. And so I uh, and I didn't even really look ahead at, like, what was Gen Con going to be like? I was just like, yeah, it's a convention. Nah, bruh. <laughs> it's so much... It's so different than what I'm used to for a convention. It's like, you know, doing cons here at home, like, I'm doing a cosplay for the con... And then I'm going back home taking that off before I go to the after party uh, because I'm still in downtown Seattle and people know me here. Uh, but also, like you were saying about L.A. and San Diego Comic Con like, and like uh, other different cons, like you can't take over the whole city like Gen Con does in Indy. Uh, and it's it's just so wild. <laughs> and it's so much fun because uh, there was a lot less even at other cons that I've been to there was a lot less of that feeling that you can get from other con goers of like, I'm the bigger fan than you that did. I did not feel any of that at Gen Con. I heard like one or two things about it happening occasionally, but like the overwhelming feeling was not, I'm trying to out fan you. It was just, Hey, don't we love the same things? I think that's such a good point, and I think that probably some of that is because its focus is tabletop. Yes, you have cosplay. Yes, you have the big guys, the biggest names in tabletop. And I know that for some people, they're like, okay, well, it's not going to be Scarlett Johansson. But it's like, these are significant people are there, um, the biggest people. But we're all there for a similar cause, and most of us are active participants in the lifestyle because we play some kind of board game or we at least have dice you know and um so yeah um okay well you know the the next piece that i did want to talk about is we were all there for kind of different reasons because again the scale cannot be we can't speak about the scale enough but it's if you have a board game that you play at home, it's there um, and you can buy a copy of it with its limited edition 2024 mini, you know? Um, so people come for all different kinds of reasons. Some people come to publicize the event. Some people come to support with booth and marketing stuff. Um, a, there are a lot of game publishers there and volunteers running games and stuff. So um, I think that... I, I would like to go back to Sean because yours is so different and unique from what the other three of us were doing there. So do you want to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about what you were doing at Gen Con this year? Yeah, so um, last year was my first year actually going to Gen Con. And I have a different experience than all of you all because I actually live in Indianapolis. So I had the added benefit of I actually got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> at night and sleep in my own bed instead of a hotel and all that, which has its, its pros and cons and all that. Um, but last year was my first year going to Gen Con and I got to go as a member of the press because um, at that time I was writing for um, a website called Comic Watch. It's more comics focused. And 
before then i had a podcast about comics and did that for like many many years like four or five years um but i just started getting into tabletop role-playing games you know less than two years ago when um i came across legend of vox machina and then i learned about critical role then dungeons and dragons and then it's been downhill from there um but last year i got to go as press and i had a blast just like interviewing people talking to different you know gaming publishers about the games they're putting out and things like that and so this year i got to go and one of the crazy things that happened uh, because i'm not like a a big writer by any means per se like I, you know i have my own blog and, and website but i don't it, it's not like a, a big following uh, by any means whatsoever yeah, but, but i got an invitation it because it is fantastic I, everybody <laughs> go read it, it. So it's legit. really yeah. good stuff it's incredible <laughs> i want so i'm gonna let you get back to it but i will not let my friends talk yeah, yeah. shit about their art it is incredible go ahead go ahead i, <laughs> I appreciate that no no thank you yeah so um but what's really interesting is I got an email from um, a PR company that said they were representing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, and they invited me to like a press event they were holding at Indiana Roof Ballroom on Wednesday, and then they also invited me to like a meet and greet with the Dungeons and Dragons team as well too, like later that evening. So um, at first I did, I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Like I thought maybe this is something like all the press got, but like when I went there. There wasn't a lot of people that attended and I come to find out like not everybody on the press list got invited. Um, and so it was pretty cool to kind of be part of that experience. And I, I mean, I gotta say it was, it was really neat just kind of seeing all this um, presenting and, and being kind of part of this um, experience with them being you know, celebrating their 50th anniversary and everything. So it was just a really cool um being able to go and and I come to find out because I honestly thought maybe I was invited by mistake. Like I, cause there were people at the, at the meet and greet awesome that was like, so yeah, it is, it is. But like the people that were there, I was just like, why am I here? So like, God. there's people like Bob world builder, for, you know, who has his YouTube channel. That is very, very popular. Huge on Daggerheart, um, by the way, guys, he's, he was one of the first yes. people talking about Daggerheart last year. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. Other name drop. Um, Let's go baby. <laughs> Abria Iyengar was there. Um, Diana the Rose, I saw her there. Crazy. Um, I forget the man's name, but um, he runs like one quest, um, one shot questers or what or whatever it's called. It's on like U uh, YouTube and, and TikTok and all that. But there were people like I recognize that had like big followings and everything. I was just like, what am I doing here? So, um, so I talked to somebody at Wizards of the Coast at that party. I was like. Did I get invited by mistake and come to find out they said that when they go to conventions and stuff like that, like, I guess they intentionally what they intentionally do is they try to build community by inviting local uh, people of, that have a press badge and stuff like that to these events. So that way it's not just like the big names, but it's also the local people to build that. That's so I thought it was really cool how they wanted to try to instill that sense of community at the local level as well, too. So I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And had I known that, I was like on this, you know, sort of list that they have because I said like, so is it just because I'm local? And the person said, it's not just that, but like they reviewed your stuff. They're like, they, they don't invite people without reviewing their stuff and all that. So I guess somebody at Wizards of Coast saw my stuff. I'm telling you, you have stuff, great stuff. Liked it. Like it, it is one, of, the, it is one sure. of those things yeah. where like, you know, <laughs> a, 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 Thank you. this space that we exist in, it's so esoteric that you're not, unless you pop off, you're not getting a million people watching your stuff all the time. Right. So I think that that's another cool thing in this space is that people judge based on quality a lot of the time rather than your viewership yeah. and stuff. Yours is great. I would invite yeah. you. Also, that, we got to yeah. move to indie guys. <laughs> do it no. No. <laughs> i i get it move no. there one week in a year yeah <laughs> don't get me wrong yeah. it's no. great for gen con but i've i've lived in seattle basically my whole life i'm not gonna fucking leave listen he's a seattle I, guy i lived in indy my whole life i would i'd be the same way like i, I would love mm -hmm. to visit seattle but i'm not going to be moving like, there <laughs> so like i yeah. am I am Kingston Brown to New York, but Seattle, like. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, the final brain cell. It's so good to see you. I believe, I'm, I'm not certain. I don't think that we've talked about who you specifically were, but I think the final brain cell was one of the people who uh, played at one of my dagger heart tables, which we're going to talk about. Um, oh, cool. 
I That's also cool. do want to note that um, that as we're talking, I have on our stream, I'm playing some of Crit Hit the Giant stuff. And actually, while you were talking about your invite to the D&D specific space, we were seeing that behind the scenes area of like the <laughs> theater and everything. So it, your timing yeah. could not have been better. It was, <laughs> guys, when, and again, follow Sean's Instagram and stuff because like I, I'm going to pause it right there so you can see when he posted this to um, I believe it was on Instagram where I first saw it um, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like I think I immediately texted you and I was like Sean what is happening you tell me about this right now <laughs> you know, so <laughs> but yeah so yeah it looks so legit yes. yeah yeah oh oh <laughs> Kari the Guardian <gasps> Oh my God, you, were you my favorite, Kari the Guardian? I wouldn't tell you if you weren't. You were my favorite. We're going to talk about that later, <laughs> the final brain self. If I told you you were my favorite, don't tell any of the other people that came to my tables. Um, I had what was said. And if you weren't, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> like, um, so, but anyway, um, yeah. So, all right. So that's Sean. Um, Jordan, do you want to talk about what you were doing at the convention? Yeah, so I... Um... <clears throat> the way I ended up deciding to go uh, to the convention was that there's uh, they do a uh, basically a participation grant every year uh, with Gen Con. You can apply and they send you a little bit of money as well as pay for your four day badge uh, to get more access and try and make financial barriers not as much of a barrier, especially for people that are that are black, brown, queer, normally excluded from the tabletop space a lot of the time. Uh, just uh, you know, to give more access to that. And that was cool. And I, uh, had my hotel set up ready to go. And then out of nowhere, they canceled. So I had to quick find another room. Like the hotel just canceled on me. Uh, and so I had to quick find another room and that's how I got looped in with Envoy. Uh, cause another friend of mine, uh, who goes to Gen Con all the time, cause they're an amazing performer and they, do a bunch of like live actual play stuff for Gen Con, uh, which is how I ended up at that party. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and so the only reason I was with Envoy and how I met y'all in the first place was just because I needed to quick find a hotel room and I could run games for them Such a good to get my setup. hotel room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was running. Uh, I was running a a, a short D and D fifth edition one shot to show off uh, some uh, this company's uh, battle terrain, uh, which was very cool and very fun to play with. And I co-wrote it with another person that like we traded off the morning and the night shifts. Uh, and we definitely wrote too long of an adventure. Uh, so if anyone that played Mithril <laughs> Madness through <laughs> Gen Con, uh, I'm sorry that I cut a third of the adventure, but I wanted to get to the cool thing at the end. It's one shot. One shots. Listen, not everybody understands this, but it, uh, Sean, you GM a, a bit as well, right? Like, um, I think for uh, Yeah, for, for my friends and for uh, my kid and some kids at our game store. So, yeah, yeah. Well, then you're doing way better than me because I, <laughs> like, if you can get kids to do it, you know, what a success story. Like, incredible. It it, it's they wrangling sheep, but it's, it's, so it's fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. So they, they are, but but it's a lot of bringing their attention back to what's going on on the game too. Mm -hmm. But I love yeah. it. It's been fun. It's also, been a blast. Yeah. The the uh, but also Jordan, back to your point, like the whole thing of like you co-wrote a one shot for Gen Con. Oh my God, so scary. Also, maybe at cool. some point you want to GM it for us over here on the Faint Divinities. So I, look, I would love to do that because it's very <laughs> funny. Uh, it will be at least three hours long because we nope. found out two hours is not enough time to do it. I, I got, <laughs> listen, my players know that I'm a, I'm a big fan of like, uh, it's, I have a joke with a lot of my friend communities of Rachel doesn't run one shots. Like she, if, if I say a one shot, guess what? It's three. You come in for 12 <laughs> hours. I will bring snacks. I will bring snacks. Right. But yeah, no, it's a it's a to do for me. Um, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. With Jordan's Tiger. tables were loud though; they were enjoying it, man. Yo. I kept hearing behind me people just like screaming and like jumping up from the table. So they, they really liked the adventure. You could tell. What we did was uh, my co writer. Uh, he wrote uh, he because he did this exact uh, exact setup for Gen Con last year, uh, and he even ran games for the same company and the same map setup to show off the terrain. So he basically mm -hmm. just took the adventure from last time 
and we just kind of reskinned it uh, to be a slightly new adventure. And then he looked at me and went, so do you think you could like add some traps? Some of my favorite things in tabletop games are I adding traps. I love to murder people. Yes. <laughs> Noxious gas or pit. Which one? <laughs> and, and yeah, like I made a puzzle, like uh, like a physical puzzle for them to solve. And it was just a whole lot of fun to just play uh, play games. And like a lot of my tables were brand new players to D&D. Mm. Uh, so they had no idea what were the right choices, which makes it so right. much better. Do you? Yeah. Like you have every age range <laughs> oh, too. Listen again. Let me introduce you to Chris again, uh, like who had never played tabletop RPG until I was like, so. And then, and they're my favorite kind of players. My best friend plays in our final in our Faint Divinities channel, and Chris plays in our Faint Divinities channel. I love them because again, they're not like should I roll perception? They don't know. So you just get to like guide them through a world, and they're there. Mm. Hi, Katie. It's so good to see you. Oh, thanks for coming in, Katie. Katie's one of our friends in the in the Discord and everything. Um, but you know. But anyway, so um, we're gonna and sorry. I, so no one in my D and D group believes that I can do a one shot too. I get it. That's how I am. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna read. Oh, the final brain cell says the whole experience was amazing. After playing, I'm currently planning an adventure for my friends, and also me being a DM for oh, the first cool. time. And Doug and cool. Duckberg just that's subscribed. Awesome. By the way, Duck is one of <laughs> is one of the other GMs from the Daggerheart group. So, and and honestly, oh, cool. like one of my faves. Like, don't tell again. I did, <laughs> but like we were we were friends immediately and stuff. And so it's so good to see you, hi friends. Um, and cons like that, you know, like, everyone's still in the buzz. Yeah, yeah everyone's so, so yeah. friendly. Like, yeah, yeah. incredible though. Yeah. The final brain cell, so incredible. I'm so glad you had fun. That's so good. Um, I do want to talk. So we're gonna get to Chris in just a second, but. Jordan, you you introduced one of the things that the three of us have in common, um, which is that we all went as part of the Envoy program. So I've, mm -hmm. I'm going to explain just briefly to some of you, because this is something I keep getting asked about, is well, how, do, how are you GMing for this stuff? And guys, it's... I said this at the beginning, Gen Con runs on support and, and friends. I don't know what's happening now. I went away from your channel and I don't know what that is. I better pause that so it's not just like, um, <laughs> <laughs> what if it was Disney? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> Gone forever from the internet. So long, pals. Um, but anyway, okay. It'll so, just run slowly through your entire history. Yeah, my life flashes <laughs> before my eyes. All of the points that I've rolled a, a natural one is just like there at table. Anyway. Okay. So the Envoy program, guys. Um, so again, Gen Con, like a lot of conventions or like Renaissance festivals, things like that, they, they, they run with the support of massive amounts of people. The Envoy program is one of those things that they are technically like a third party who help to find people and get them involved into GMing. So they work with different companies like, um, you know, the publishers behind Final Girl, the, the solo uh, horror board game and they'll place people who are vetted and go through an interview process and they will have you run that game for people at the convention because they need people to showcase it and as a trade-off mm -hmm. you get if you choose if you so choose you get to stay in a hotel room provided by you now it's camp style you are staying with friends like other people mm -hmm. a lot of the time but um they pay i was on the floor oh my gosh incredible <laughs> yeah exactly right you might be on a cot wow. you could be on the floor like uh yep. you know um but and they they so they pay for the hotel room they pay for your badge to the convention if you want to get there, and Katie of Anywhere, again, is saying, yes, I've been wanting to hear more about this. A hundred percent, guys. Like, it's it's a thing that people are interested in. I'm not gatekeeping this information. Why would I? We should all be involved in this space. Um, get in there. Yeah. And you need people like like us that are willing to do that because it is it is the biggest smoke and mirrors of conventions of like how are you here and then it's just the spider-man meme you know because we're <laughs> we're all just happy to be here you know um duckberg again one of our my fellow gm says envoy is an amazing company and initiative yeah um so that's kind of the introduction to envoy 
Chris, you were one of the Envoy group. Do you want to talk about who you were supporting and working with and doing? Yeah. So Rachel wanted to do this thing. So I was like, I'm down. Let's let's get in there, you know. And when you go into Envoy, there's a, a whole list of like all the publishers that are at Gen Con, all the games that are be that they'll be demoing. You can do like you could be a game master or you can run like the ex exhibition booths where you're kind of more in there where people buy the games and stuff. I figured a game master would be funner. So I went with uh, Rollercrit and did Heroes of Barcadia. I got the game here, too. Super fun. You actually game. got a copy? Oh, you get a free it. copy. Uh, <laughs> also got a free copy. By the way, I'm um, gonna toggle over real quick to again. I'm gonna mark it for my friends. Crit Hit the Giant did a whole interview on his YouTube channel of the makers of Heroes of Barcadia. Chris, I'm gonna let you talk about it because you pitched it, you pitched the crap out of it at Gen Con. But uh, if y'all want yeah. behind the scenes with the creators. <laughs> Go subscribe to Sean's channel. What are you doing? It's right on the screen. Anyway, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. It was funny, like, meeting uh, Sean a day or two in and then, like, pulling up his thing and he's, like, uh, interviewing the owner of Rollercrit. And I was like, oh, yep. <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> um, Rollercrit's huge, too. They do, like, all the merchandise for Gen Con and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, essentially, there's a lot of tables out. I had three tables of, like, six people each running three games at a time. Um, they also had Heroes of Arcadia going at the Nevermore, so it's like a bar outside of Gen Con, kind of like we were saying, like all of Gen Con is like immersed in this thing, and they had a deal with the bar where you could like buy your beer and they'll fill your like game beer up with like uh alcohol there and you could play. Um, it's the best. yeah, and that was that's that's essentially the gist of it. One of the days, and we'll, we'll, again, we're going to talk about this later, but guys, again, I'm spilling all the tea about Gen Con over here. One of the days, Nevermore, is, again, a, a bar in the city, and we spent so much time there. It's the best. It's the best. Um, gem, yeah. One of the days, Chris was done uh, with his shift. I was already over at Nevermore because I pitched a board game and stuff, and people, uh, we were just there, and we were like, yo, we could play the game and drink? Okay, so Chris came from demoing the game and we spent our free time demoing the game with beer uh just as randos <laughs> and literally like the bouncer who was kind of like watching us for a while kind of like came by and i was like you want to come see and he was like yeah and then it and by the end became buddies with all the bouncers yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the end of the weekend we were like hugging and goodbye and be like oh i miss you you have a great year and he was like i'm getting that game and we're like you get it he was so great if you're <laughs> you'll never find this but if you're there i please just i miss you i miss everyone from gen con so um but yeah uh heroes of barcadia um roll a crit group anything else you wanted to add to that chris it was a crazy experience you had to do it with water. yeah crazy experience had to do it with water in the convention which was rough um yeah a little boring but um yeah um so some yeah people not, not in the chat some people are like again talking about the, about like the nevermore stuff squire's asking spill the tea you know i will i'll feed you baby birds don't you even worry about it um <laughs> uh and and duckburg you have to go you have to go to nevermore it's so it's perfect. I'm gonna have to talk about that more later, but we gotta, we gotta move on to. So I, I've saved myself for last because I wanted to get you guys front and center with stuff. But um, and again, roller crit is on the screen, but I'm gonna toggle back over to Sean's other video. Again, you are just like our whole background for this because again, like look at that aerial shot. Those of you in the thing. Again, that's just Sean, just holding. <laughs> it's I thought just it was holding a drone. It up. Yeah. I thought it was a drone. So. Weird moment to uh, slightly break up the stream, but I will be back in like five, ten minutes. I got to switch good. my laundry over. You're good. Do you want to, can you, um, <laughs> you can leave it running if you're okay, um, or you can like close off Up your, to you. You leave it running, leave it running, because it will, okay, it yeah, won't. I'll just be back yeah. in a second. Perfect, just, fantastic. Good luck That's how laundry. last minute this was. It, guys, it was. It was. our <laughs> friends were not aware that we were really doing this. I like, was like, hey, Sean, you want to come? And he was like, yeah, like, <laughs> like I guess. So I really appreciate it. Like, um. But anyway, so the where where mine was different. So I was yes working through Envoy, but where Chris and Jordan were both in the uh, demo hall, I believe, which again is just it's it's like five gymnasiums of space. Yeah, we were in there. We were getting poked with uh, 
with uh, yeah. convention swords and smacked with backpacks. Yeah, it's <laughs> it where like yep. If that's there like where the heart, it's all at, yeah, it's the heart of the convention, right? That's where all of the tables are. That's why you where you buy all your cool merch and everything, and where it's where most people are going to play the games. But because mm. I, and again, Duckburg in chat, um, and again, some people in chat were familiar with this, because I had specifically signed up to run Daggerheart Games, which is from Darrington Press and Critical Role. They wanted to, They there's a little special care that goes into what they're doing. So they actually booked out conference rooms for both da Daggerheart and Candela in the hotel connected by the Skywalk. So I, I will be honest, I felt a little bit like privileged when I got to like see the space that I was in because it's this six table, that's all, six table ball, like conference room. And it's just, mm -hmm. it it's it's still going to be loud, of course, because you have six tables of tabletop running it. Um, but I was there as one of the 12 Daggerheart GMs. There were 12 Candela as well. And, um, and we all made really good friends. And, uh, you know, the, the energy, I was talking to one of the GMs earlier today, actually, we've just, we're just going to be friends forever. All of us. Um, the vibe and the the chemistry of the group was so good. It was so fun, and I think because Daggerheart is on the horizon, slated for release in twenty twenty five, there's a lot of interest in these new emerging systems. So the the people that were there, they don't know yet what the rules are. There's like a little bit of of kind of nervousness about playing a system that nobody really knows yet um and it's mm -hmm. so fun it, it it gave me the best experiences of having brand new players at table because everyone is brand new to dagger heart you haven't played mm -hmm. we've played more of it Beta, yeah. than a lot of people and it's not that much you know so um we, Katie uh, said, uh, now I need to go to Gen Con through the Envoy program next year and go to Nevermore. Absolutely you do. And um, <laughs> yeah, Duckburg, again, one of the, I keep saying it, but anyway. Number one thing I learned was middle tables are the hardest to run at. I was there early. Every day I was there early and I was like, this is my seat. I stay here. No, no more. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then final brain cells that really would have never thought that it's crazy, right? Isn't it? Isn't it wild? It was a very unique experience. Um, so, so much fun. Uh, we were running the Marauders of Windfall, which anyone can see. Anybody can go read that. It's released as part of their what was the open beta materials. Of course, now they've just closed off um, while they refine final stuff and everything. But we were running Marauders of Windfall. One of the people who played one of the pre-gen Karis, our giant guardian, is in chat tonight. And so, so, I, if it's the Kari that I'm thinking of, that table was so beautiful. And also, Duckburg is right. Miss Physics, uh, one of our other GMs, she made masts. And so I was like, if we are running at different <laughs> times um, and I'm bringing a map, maybe you want to share. And so we had one table. Literally, our shifts were opposite. So we just kept our table the entire nice. conference with the mass. It was so sick. So, but yeah. Um, but that's <clears throat> that's what we were doing there and stuff. Um, I, I do want to talk about... Um, some of the Gen Con stuff that was really, we, we can't escape what was happening at Gen Con this year, right? I've already mentioned Gary Gygax, who is one of the co-creators of Dungeons and Dragons, was the person who started D&D. &D. It was 60 people, $1 entry in 1968 on Lake Geneva, you know? Um, but we are 50 years out from that at this point, and... They were doing the 50th release, which Sean has talked about a, a little bit. Um, is there mm -hmm. anything, man, is there anything you can share with us? I don't know. I don't think they make you sign anything going in your press, but. Yeah. So, so when I went to the event, they actually had a slide basically saying like, here's what you can do and not do during this like event, basically. And the only thing that I really couldn't do that I recall was I couldn't take video photos of them talking so like i have my like like all my videos by the way was shot on gopro because 
it was just easier to do it that way than to take like my professional like DSLR camera to take shots and stuff like that. So I had my little GoPro camera ready to go. And they said no photos or videos. I was like, oh, and then I just kind of like tuck it away in my bag because I didn't want them to think that was breaking it. Uh, but they said that, you know, we could live tweet or post, you know, what they were talking about, which is what I did. I was doing that on uh, threads and kind of reporting like, you know, what they were sharing and stuff like that. Um the things that they had talked about uh, was r really cool, really interesting. So the first person, um, I'm forgetting her name right now on top of my head, but she's like the VP of product and merchandise. And so what was really interesting is that she actually talked about and addressed the um, OGL debacle that happened last year, right? Um, which I was not expecting them to talk about at all. And so, you know, she talked about like how they've, you know, learn from that experience and everything. And so the updated version that's coming out um, this year, they're going to put that in Creative Commons, which, you know, 5th edition is, is technically in that right now as well, too. But they're actually going to be putting that up in Creative Commons as well, too. Um, Jeremy Crawford and Chris Perkins, the lead designers for Dungeons and Dragons, they came and talked about, you know, all the redesign stuff and, and what they did. And one of the things I thought was really cool was there's a lot of things um but actually because i went to the event they did give everybody there like a copy of the uh 2024 handbook so I would, i've been reading Show through that I'm okay actually... i need you to place it right in front of your yeah. face because of how i have yeah. the camera and everything guys look how pretty no none of you have it i don't have it look but who look who does <laughs> yeah. which we're talking yeah. about yeah it's so fun so which fun. Yeah, which I'm doing an article and video about. Um, I'm not going to be able to read the whole book. I'm a slow reader, but I'm going to do a deep dive on the Barbarian class. I'm actually working on that, and I'm reading through the book. And I got to say, there's a lot of things I do like about it, a lot more than 2014 in a lot of different ways. Um, wow. One of the things that really stuck out to me is they talk about um, how they wanted the user experience to be improved with the design of the book. And I think you can really tell that from reading this because there are a lot of differences that you can tell from like readability and what they put in and what they took out not like so much not, they definitely change rules and stuff like that but like when you read the 2014 handbook they start off with every class giving like you know three paragraphs of like the type of character that this could be in the class they absolutely removed that and just kind of got straight into it which i think made it a lot more accessible for people who are new to the game and just kind of got into it right um and then they talked about Project Sigil, which was their, which is the name that they've given the 3D virtual tabletop, not the, you know, D and D Beyond maps. You know, that's like a 2D thing. This is like a 3D that almost looks like a video game that they're working on. That um, they actually gave us a sneak peek on like what the building tool looks like for uh, the maps. Which I'll be honest and say that I'm probably not going to use that in any of my games, just because it feels too much like a video game for me and i like to do more imagination like have people describe how things are happening with flavor and stuff like that but if you like this sort of thing like it's actually really cool to see how you can build um your own kind of maps and things like that as well too so um so we did get like a little sneak peek into what that looked like as well so yeah so the press event was really cool they also had third party people there so they had like cobalt press whiz kids hit point press uh, they're kind of talking to the people who are in attendance, the products that they're going to have at Gen Con, as well as like what's coming out and stuff like that. So they really made a concerted effort to kind of highlight other parties who've been supportive of Dungeons and Dragons as well, too, and to kind of say that they're wanting to focus on building a community is really been the kind of like the highlight of or the focus that they try to do with that press event. So, yeah. yeah. That's so, man, the, uh, and, and also in chat, we have Katie saying, ooh, drama, keep talking, Sean. Like, this is what, <laughs> this is what people want to, again, for those of you who don't yeah. know what Gen Con is, it's the, it's the place of secrets. It's the place of all the secrets for your favorite hobbies. Um, also, they announce thank, a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Thank you so much <laughs> really to do. our latest subscriber, former fro. It's very, very, very kind. That's me. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> thank you so much. I love it so much. Yeah. Listen, it's, not every That's day great. that you get a subscriber on camera, guys. Maybe you too. You too can come on camera. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you can't. It's our only. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Um, uh, also, the final brain cell. From what I have seen and heard, they are revamping all the classes, abilities, and spells. Looking forward to the future of D and D. I so you know I 
I always open any time I talk about this stuff because we know that Wizards of the Coast has had a tumultuous year um, and that they there's a lot of controversy. Um, it, I, I, I think it's important in the tabletop space that you are staying on top of what is in in happening what's going on and everything um but i'm not here to hash any of that out um what i can say is that i i know there's so much talk about and this this channel knows i'm a dagger heart girly through and through i want to see what is happening in dagger heart i'm excited about seeing a split to a different kind of tabletop because that's what i'm most excited about right now um also i think you know, having something to sharpen the blade of competition is very good for our space and everything. That said, mm -hmm. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I will never not love Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and I will always sit on the side of optimism that anything that's happening in this space improves the space. Um, and I've heard some mm -hmm. really good stuff from people like Jenny D, you know, who's done interviews and stuff um, with uh, some of the creators and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I, I hope that it is that next thing and I hope that it's backwards compatible. <laughs> <laughs> so with because I'm a little bit suspicious, but um, yeah. but you know, so but any way you slice it, if mm. I I don't always believe in the adage, 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 ad, the adage, adage, fra the phrase, I don't always, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, I love you so much. I say words for a living. I should know with that word. The physical presence nah. alone, incredible. I know you're a thespian. Um, so, right. yeah. uh, Will also, guys, I have like a, I still have my little tag of I danced with Will that yeah, you were yeah. handing out. Oh, you mentioned. mean, you mean one of these? One that of I those. Because yes. yes. like, I have like a stack of them that I just had to keep at home because I mentioned it to one friend here and they're like, you're saving one for me, right? And I'm like, I only got a hundred made. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> friend friend of jordan's i have one they were a hit, they were a hit. Um, it's hanging on like my i won't say anyway i'm very excited to have it um but i i don't i what i was saying is i don't always believe in the phrase of a you know the the tide a rising tide raises all ships however when you're work when you're living and breathing in something as small and esoteric as tabletop rpg i think that that is necessarily true in some ways and i personally you heard it here first folks if you're my friend you keep hearing me talk about this and i'm sorry but i you know i think to your point, Sean, one of the reasons that they're able to really minimize a lot of that and they don't have to go into the lore of all the classes and everything is because 10 years ago, no one was, not nobody, way less people were playing tabletop. Way less people were playing Dungeons and Dragons. We live in the future now where people play this stuff more. You don't have to tell people what a ranger is. They already have the idea. So we right. get to streamline. And I really feel that as we move, I think, I hope, but I truly believe also that we're going to see another big influx into this community um, because look at everything that's happening you know the release of mm -hmm. you can pin a timeline on everything right you can pin D, D 5e and then 80s nostalgia leading to like stranger things geek and century mm -hmm. releasing critical role dead by oh, daylight dead by a, daylight uh, but, uh, yeah a hundred percent and now we're seeing resurfaces of a lot of that stuff we're seeing yeah D, &D 2024 whatever you want to add a 5.5 but coming out. Oh, they don't even yeah, know what name they're calling it, so... Uh. Did you, well, at the press event, someone asked that. It may have been me, if I remember correctly. I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> but Jeremy Crawford said it'll be called D&D, like, uh, 24th... Ed like, 2024 edition, basically. That's So, I it's it's yeah. not one D&D. &D. Yeah, it's not 5.5, yeah. but he says it's, it's just going to be called... Fifth edition, twenty twenty four version, or something like that. Forget so, the number yeah. of editions. We're just going with the year. Well, that's the whole. <laughs> I thing. know, yeah. Right, that's the whole <laughs> thing. Is that if they if they come out with a sixth edition, it has to be different than five e. So they can't call mm -hmm. it sixth edition because, frankly, let's talk about the business side of things. They would have to turn mm -hmm. away everyone who's invested and loves fifth edition. It's a good version. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to right. do that. Calling it five point five seems to undercut the marketing value of it. If they're like, hey, pay for half a version, you know. Um, I mean. 
nostalgia right. wise, it would make me very happy because I oh, my first tabletop was three point five. So like three point five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sean, are you a three five too? I've I've only I have not played three point five, but I've I've uh, leaned into it a little bit to kind of look at it, and I know that's what Pathfinder Two mm -hmm. is based off of is D and D three point five. I played some Pathfinder. Pathfinder yeah. was was three point seven. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Incredible. This the commentary yeah. goes off, guys. We're gonna have to book ourselves so that we could be the Muppets in a theater just like rah, 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 rah. Right. Well, <laughs> just Stantler and Waldorf an event would be so good. Guys, this is the gang. We're, we're, we're my mind, right? yeah. we are there next year at Gen Con and we're just walking around in cosplay. All of us are Muppets and we're just gonna womp womp the whole time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> um in and in, in in chat we have you know sean with the big brain moves at the con asking the big hard hitting questions listen guys you saw it you heard it here happened, first yeah. one of our guests asking the heavy hitting but yeah absolutely um and uh i never really understood how people stayed with 3.0 after three yeah three five came out now i get it i think i'm sticking with 5e I'm the, I'm that kind of a person where it's like, yo, I've put, <laughs> I don't want to say thousands, but that's just the reality of it, into my <laughs> hobby of 5e. You want me to what now? But so if they're making something that is backwards compatible, um, and that's what I think, I think it was Jeremy Crawford had said was they, there's no way 10 years ago to have foresight into what will happen in the future but they can now have hindsight and so they can build a system that works for both and make the improvements i'm interested to see it <laughs> i won't be seeing it unless it's on someone else's channel because i am in dagger heart city but um uh, but, <laughs> yeah but um but yeah so that i i think sean to what oh chris did you have anything you wanted to add to any of this it's been a little while i just want to make sure that i'm all good all good yeah i'm a newbie so uh i don't get some of the references but that's okay you know what i mean i'm here for the the, yeah, the uh green perspective i guess uh one thing that's crazy is i was just walking around the convention a ton uh pathfinder is massive i i walked into like a a room yeah. where the hall was seriously like the size of the expo hall we were in and it was just tables they were maybe doing an epic or something but Hundreds of tables yeah. of people playing Pathfinder. Like God. that was mind blowing I to love me. Epic so much. Yeah, <laughs> it was, looks so cool. I have explained Epic so much to Chris because I used to support running and, and stuff. My favorite. I can't wait yeah. till yeah. something like that exists for Daggerheart. Um, because I'll be all up in there. Um, it's it's gonna be cool to see like that game come out and hopefully pop off and what the response will be. Um, mm -hmm. very excited for that. Hopefully, you know, when we go next year, that'll be when they're releasing it and they'll be out there with the rest of the um, tabletop games. Cause you guys were kind of like in a little corner with Darrington press and um, yeah, I'm excited right. to see like when that goes into the flow and you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Just to see what happens. Some competition for D and D hopefully. Yeah, because again, I think that, you know, everybody knows Monopoly. Hey, we're staying on brand talking about a board game Monopoly. There, there's not there's not as much incentive to stay great. And, you know, so let's make sure that the space thrives. I am I plus I just I love Darrington Press. I love Critical Role. I think mm -hmm. they are. I truly think that they are good organizations, good people running it. I trust them with this space. I want to see good things right. out of it. Um, people in chat talking. Uh, first of all, I have to say, Duckburg, take me down to the Daggerheart City where the dice show fear and the roll stay shitty is incredible. <laughs> 10 out of 10. No well notes. Well no <laughs> notes. Um, the final brain great. cell consuming all the knowledge. Yeah, Paizo going off. So much floor space for Paizo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it was like that last year, too. Like, they yeah. they've always have a huge area. Um, and they're, I mean, and I interviewed them last year as well, too. And they're just great people over there, too. Oh, so, yeah, no. it's, um, but yeah, they have a huge, I don't think people realize how big of a presence they have because people always think about D and D and D and D has a huge presence, but oh, Pathfinder really. also has a huge presence because what people don't see is they actually have like, I think a few huge halls that are on the second floor That's what of the Indiana convention center yeah. where they do the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like people don't see it up front, but 
it there's a lot of people there that love playing that game as well too so it's, it's definitely yeah. that just a yeah, metaphor for huge. this entire industry also of like from the outside all you see is D. You get right. in and you're like, holy shit, you guys are playing, uh, y'all are playing bears in, uh, what's the system that I'm thinking of, <laughs> Honey Heist? You're playing, yeah. uh, you're, you're, you're fighting Cthulhu monsters, you're vampiring mm. and masquerading over here, what's happening, you know? Also, like, just a yep. side note, uh, Honey Heist is in a thing called One Page RPGs, uh, basically it's the entire rule set's one page, um, yeah. and, which is amazing. I've run a lot of Honey Heist games for uh, for middle schoolers, because oh, uh, yeah. I've I've taught I've taught a class that's like uh, uh, story writing and storytelling through TTRPGs uh, to middle schoolers. It's a super fun class that uh, that I've taught, and playing Honey Heist with middle schoolers is great because it's already madcap shenanigans because you are bears stealing honey, yeah. trying to pretend <laughs> that you're not bears stealing honey. <laughs> um. Well, the, the thing that I love about Honey Heist and similar things is Chris knows this because, again, I just talk his ear off about it. But um, I'm very I know that the floor for getting into tabletop is very high. Most people can't reach it because you have to have someone who's willing to GM and you have to have people who know the rules and stuff. I'm very passionate about things that make it more accessible to get into this space. So I love right. one page RPGs. I love. Oh games like Heroes of Barcadia that really showcase hey, roll this d20. It's not scary. I know it seems scary, but it's not. You could do it. Right. Um, and then mm -hmm. you step by step come in and before you know it, you're collecting shiny rocks. You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> Also, what we do we need to do to get D&D &D into our educational system? I don't know. I don't know because it's theater, it's math. It's, I yeah, already am. We have to hire Jordan everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, I, I've yeah. already I've already done it. Coming to a public uh, school near you, Jordan's, uh, you know, four course listing. Look, you know, <laughs> if it if it can work as a class at a summer course for the University of Washington, uh, get a hold of my buddy John, uh, my buddy John Benner, who's really the uh, the head of this whole thing. Okay, you heard uh, it here, guys. Everybody, email yeah. John. It's time. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there's a lot of educators who. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> He'd be so excited if anyone, uh, if other people through academia started to try and pick this up, uh, because it is it is his whole his whole uh, doctoral, I believe, oh, thesis wow. is on using is on using games to teach storytelling and to use it as an education aid for like math skills, language skills, uh, also just social skills. Yes. I yep. love nerds. Very true. I, I, like, I love, ta I love tabletop RPG so much. I am so passionate about it. I scream about it all the time. Chris has to hear me. I like, he'll hear me like, cause I'm a very vocal person. I'll like yelp from a room over and he'll come yeah, and be like, are you okay? And I'm like, you're never going to believe it. Like, like it's inevitably <laughs> something about imaginary land, you know? Um, but yeah, I, Sean, do you remember what you were going to say about uh, tabletop in schools at all or teaching children or anything? like that yeah yeah no i was gonna say like i've i've seen so many people talk about how their educators themselves and they've been incorporating dungeons and dragons into their classes either you know as a teaching lesson or as like an after school club or things like that so there's definitely a presence there and i wouldn't be surprised if there are publishers that have like educators program where they can sign up and they can get like discounted you know materials or something like that too i think somebody said that that maybe Wizards of the Coast have it, or maybe it's a different organization, but there's organizations I think out there that tries to at least help with that too. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Wizards has a direct like part of Wizards that does that, but okay. there's, there's a couple people there that like that, if you email in if you email in and you're small and genuine enough, a lot of times they're like, Yeah, take a couple books, run your school program. Okay, maybe it's, yeah, maybe that's what they're referring to. Yeah, that's yeah. the nature of the community, right? Is that like I, 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 you know, it's not necessarily conducive to late stage capitalism, but this this community is very <laughs> much like, hey, are you're a fan of this thing? Oh, me too, me too. We could, you know, and then and so it's it's a beautiful, community. incredibly accessible incredibly for sure. Accessible. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, because Chris, you're brand new to it and everything, and you had said that of like, 
I think you said, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, feel free to correct me, but I think you said that like it wasn't an, a space that you knew you were going to fit into necessarily, but you can't feel like a stranger at Gen Con, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say even too, that. like um, GMing is like very, uh, what's the word, like intimidating to get into? Right, like that's yeah. even the next step of like trying to get into, and uh, even trying that out for the first time, um, not as scary as it seems, and like also very rewarding. Um, teaching running a table and like curating an experience for people to have a good time is like yeah. such a good experience. It, it's so much fun, you know, when, it, when your table starts yelling and like getting invested in this thing, you're bringing a bunch of strangers together. Um, if you have yeah i would recommend people try it yeah if you have an iota of acts of service love giving in your chest gm like you are you like if you do it well for your friends you are giving them a gift every time that you're at the table or you should be at a good table if that's what you're doing you know there's 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 only two ways to do gming and and 90 percent of it is incredibly good and and the 10 percent yes is is rough but um doug berg says running games is my love language too me too that's the forever gm problem of like any <laughs> anybody that's like i want to get into dnd i'm like okay we got them. Let's go. You know, it's just it's a lot. Hey, so. You've just yeah. got to do what I do to avoid being the forever GM. As much as I enjoy it, is I've made friends with other forever GMs, and they're just a bit more forever GM than I am. Yeah. That's that's what I'm doing here with you right Perfect. now, Jordan. <laughs> oh damn it! I done played myself. You've been tricked. <laughs> Soon it's dagger hide for me. Like, you know, like, so, okay, now I, I do want to keep tonight like pretty short and everything because I'm going to be editing this for YouTube. But I do, I have to talk about, you know, a piece that we've kind of danced around, which is like, again, if you don't know about Gen Con and everything, um, then, then you might not know that, that like I said, the people, the who's who is there in the city and you're probably going to pass by them and they'll probably, you know, like let you do an interview with them if you just ask, you know. Um, but uh, so, Sean, you had said that you also um, I think that they're calling it sigil which makes me laugh so hard because of the matt mercer the way that he says sigil and i was like are mm -hmm. they all mispronouncing it because it's sigil right but i i keep hearing them say sigil. i thought they said sigil at the press event but Did i also have hearing sigil loss so it very event? much could have been okay. say what but I, I i think i think they said sigil at the press event but i know that everyone that's even remotely associated with matt mercer is calling it sigil because of Mercer. Maybe that's what it so... is. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> is that's effect, my yeah. people, you know? But yeah. Sigil, Sigil, whatever it is. And again, I don't hear enough people talking about how funny that is that that is happening. But, um, you know, they, there was a very, people knew about it. People knew that at the end of Gen Con on Saturday night, Saturday night is the final night of the event. They do stuff on Sunday, but it's closing down. People are beginning to pack up and stuff. Um, Saturday night is where all of the biggest uh, encore stuff happens. We knew that there was going to be a D&D &D event, but they were keeping it so close to the chest of who was going to be there. Um, and I actually have some friends who were GMing for Candela that were in there. So I have some like, you know, I, I, I'm very excited to talk to them later more about it. But um, on that night, they brought out crazy people. They brought out Abria Iyengar as the GM, right? They brought out Brennan Lee Mulligan was playing. Um, Samantha, uh, I'm going to wait real quick. Anjali, uh, who uh, is, a, again, incredible in the space, an incredible voice actor, was uh, she was also there. But then also kind of the hit of the thing, we are talking about the trajectory of Dungeons & Dragons, right? We cannot overstate the impact of Baldur's Gate 3. And so, in a winning move on their part, right, they brought out Samantha Bayart. You know her as Carlac in the Carlac, game. yes. And mm -hmm. Neil Nuvon, who you know as Asterian. 
they're on the main stage playing the game together. Um, that is live on YouTube, by the way. You can watch this, absolutely. Um, I think it has been pretty heavily edited to get rid of some of the struggles of using the new mm-hmm. system. Um, yeah. A lot of commentary mm-hmm. happening about that and everything. But um, <laughs> but that was part of it is, hey, we have this huge thing. We're announcing Sigil, Sigil, whatever, um, and showing it. But literally everyone is there. And again, some of the tea, some of the spillage here is that uh, because I – so that Nevermore bar location that we've talked about um, at the end of the convention on Saturday night. And I think that this is a trend that they do and everything. Um, they host a, a, a party for specific, for people it is listed only you can't just walk in but you know Mm -hmm. sometimes you shake hands with the right people and you might get in and because i knew some of the people and (laughs) chris knew me and jordan knew some of the people and we we got to be there and it was incredible the karaoke was sick Oh, Jordan, it was you so did a live dope. band playing karaoke where you can go mm-hmm. like pick from yep. a list and they knew all the songs and so you can get up and yep. and sing and I did with my, uh, with my having run games for four days already not yeah. really their voice singing hey ya it was hey ya <laughs> I knew yes. yeah. Oh yeah. I, I kept like because I am just a I am an introvert but you wouldn't know it from meeting me and stuff and so I kept being like socially exhausted and I would go and find Chris and me and maybe Jordan and we, we'd, we'd all be talking and then another song would come on and I would like run screaming over to the stage like ah like you know like because i just i love participating and stuff um well like funny thing right like going there um we didn't know anybody and um we we go in you know you put your name in the list give them your email and stuff i go to the bar and like first person i see is the dude running dungeons and dragons behind me at gen con the whole time and it was jordan mm-hmm. i was like uh it's cool like you run into like people throughout the convention constantly you will see like everybody and make because it's the smallest all kinds world. of friends it's the yeah smallest it's a small world, world. Possible. you are all inside of a city together it's you might as well be in an aquarium you know um mm-hmm. and this party by the way Re- nevermore is a permanent bar it's a permanent fixture in indie and everything but um it is i do want i couldn't i have to say that it's hunter's entertainment who puts the party on yes. Hunter's Entertainment mm. is an incredible publishing group. Um, some of the people that you know and you love, like Ivan Van Norman, uh, is is was one of the original people behind it. But they have incredible people. Like um, I'm trying to man, my brain is leaving me. I know that Nala is over all of their. Um, uh, art direction and stuff. I know that Knox is one of the heads of the group. Um, they have just, it's a fantastic group there. And Michelle and over there, that. what was that? Kids in Capes, right? Is there a thing that they're working on oh, right now? Absolutely. Kids, right. kids in really Capes. Cool. Yeah. Er- yeah. It's in capes, yeah. It's in capes. Because, because remember yeah. that they ha- they support the system um, that is uh, powered by kids on bikes. The idea yeah. is like Stranger Things heroes who are on their bicycles going to save the town and everything. They've done kids on bikes as a system, a TTRPG yeah. system that they use. Right now, Kickstarter, I'm a backer. I'm so excited about it. I've spent too much money backing it because <laughs> I want the cool stuff. It's so good. Um uh, they're doing kids in capes again. It's just a thing. I'm mm-hmm. passionate about kids that have superpowers. Um, it, it's so incredible. Hunters Entertainment puts this event on, um, and again, it is Michelle Wen who is uh, ov- who oversees it. She was very proud of the event, and she she should be. It was incredible. Um, it was so cool. It was so much fun. Such a good party. Like so fantastic. It, you know, uh, Nala J Wu is their art director and illustrator. Oh, Marquia McCarty was there. Ryan Omega, I was thinking about. I'm just, Mm -hmm. I just saw the dungeon dudes there. I recognize them from YouTube. Yeah, Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, there's so many people there. It was the wild thing about being at that party and being just a guy. Uh, (laughs) It's that like every (laughs) other like quarter that I'm turning, there's someone that I like regularly watch online. Uh, that's right. just Ginny, there Ginny being a person. Yeah. Uh, Anna like, Rose was there too, yeah. So many people. Yeah. Uh, and so everything. I'm just trying to be normal. 
Well, and this well, like, we won't go smoke the patio. Normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this leads to me too, because again, I'm trying to keep this tight and everything, but that that the end of our week, and then we'll go around and if we want to talk about favorite stuff just briefly, but the end of our week, you know, Saturday night is the big night and it, it culminated in this party and everything. Um, yeah, just continuously fangirling the final brain cell. Absolutely. I was losing it. Um, but uh, <laughs> the night culminates in this Hunter's Entertainment party and I know that I have to host Daggerheart the next morning. I am a consummate professional. I have to go to bed. Um, so I'm like, Chris is wanting to stay and I'm like, I, we got to go. I have to do this and stuff. And they were like, let's do one more like little lap. We're going to chill on the patio, you know, have a final burn one final, you know, for the night and everything. And I was like, okay, I can be convinced. And then I don't know, Jordan, if you want to like kind of and talk so about it. We're there. And I hear through the gate uh, beside me just, oh, hey, uh, can I borrow a light from anyone? And I turn around and it's Neil Newborn. And my brain goes, I know you. I know that I know you. I don't remember how I know you right now. <laughs> Do you? I, I need to paint the picture in my head that I was hearing because I'm exhausted. I hear this voice. I look over and it's just, again, Neil Newbon, who is the Baldur's Gate 3 Asterian. Still and Asterian, I'm, you yeah. know how sometimes you see someone and you're like, is that? No, it's got, it's got to be. And I was talking to Chris as Jordan is talking and I'm like, is that Asterian? And Chris is having a great time. And he's like, it could be. Oh, like, yeah, I was like, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. Everyone your favorite. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, so it, mm-hmm. do you remember like, as, what he said? As you, <laughs> no, I was too busy. I was too busy collapsing into myself. Because you were saying, I, I, are you a voice actor? And he's being it's, so Asterian coy. He's just so cool. He was like, yeah, my be. And you were like, I just can't place your face. And I know. And, and he said, uh, yeah, well, let me know when you figure it out. And at this point, I know. I know. So I lean to the gate and I say, in the least cool way that has ever happened before, I say, Asterian? And he says, that's right, love. And I immediately lose it. I'm like, he was like, um, what's your name? I'm like, I'm Rachel. I love you. I love Asterian. Thank you, Neil. Like, and, and then I turn to his left because it's all shadowy. It's a movie. It's this moment is a movie mm-hmm. in my brain. And there I see someone else I recognize and I, I shouldn't have, but I freaked out. I'm, I'm a girl's girl and it's Anjali. And I was like, Mm-hmm. And then she was like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. And she came up and I'm like trying to figure out how to get this gate down. Anjali's like, oh, I wish we could get through. I'm like, ah, give me two minutes. But then, then, you know, Ivan Van Norman so came cool. out and collected them and they all mm-hmm. absconded. But what a cherry on top of the, the event for, for me. At least. Mm-hmm. I think was- they were still like special guests at the time yeah. right so like when we saw them we were yeah. like oh shit they're probably gonna be like playing and see, something yeah. and i was so uh and i was so like surprised uh because anjali i actually saw on wednesday when i was checking into the hotel in the lobby and i was like dope anjali's here that's super cool i'm such a big fan i'm not gonna bother i'm not gonna bother right now because it looks like doing important stuff <laughs> so I, was, I hope i run into her again and bam if it was one drink prior or one hour earlier, I would not have screamed Anjali, but it was unfortunately midnight 30 and three drinks. <laughs> Plus we Chris and I had made friends with the bartender and she was she was she was making very nice drinks for us that were a little it was like I'll get you a double, I'll hook you up. I was like, no, no, don't. <laughs> I have, I have, yeah. Also, yeah, the energy in chat, by the way, same thing over like yes, fangirling, uh, yes, all caps, you met Anjali. Absolutely. It was it was wild. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I know, again, Michelle at Hunter's Entertainment it was like Instagramming and she was like, uh are you cool enough to have these people at your party kind of thing? Uh, hats off to you, Michelle. Like, Michelle, like, yeah. wow, what a party. So we had to I'm leave scrolling. immediately after because, again, consummate professional, no amount of of me losing it over someone can keep me from a good job. I need those praise points. So I had to. We all had the morning shift games, and uh, I yep. think Jordan well, stayed. Me, like a nightmare, I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We like, heard I stayed, that you I went stayed there until after? like one thirty. Yeah, yeah. There was another bar uh, in town. Uh, I think it's called the Tin Roof or something like that. That I had gone to just about every night, and I stayed there till it closed at three. Uh, <laughs> and just to be clear, because I'm a monster. We're also, West yeah. Coast, and we travel to the East Coast, so it's yeah. early. But not me, not yeah. me. I fall, I fall asleep immediately. I need my eight hours. I'm dead. You know. I was so. shocked getting up for the our games the next day and seeing you there at ten a.m. I was like, how do you do it? <laughs> That's Look, a there's a reason why. There's a yeah. reason why I drained yeah. that water bottle so quickly before. Your <laughs> so eyes I'm just, so red. I'm struggling <laughs> the entire time <laughs> I'm running that first game every morning of the of the con. But I, you know, I've been doing theater for over a decade, and if there's anything that actors can do, it's party the night before and then do a matinee. I can't do acting. Then I'm yeah. out. I'm out. I got it. <laughs> yeah, all the rest. You got to You got to train. It. Yeah, yeah. I I had no <laughs> voice. The last day, people were like coming up, like, yeah. "Oh, Rachel, it was good doing." I was like, "Like it was nothing. It was gone. Just didn't me. It was so. Yeah. I was gone. Um, and and yeah. Also, um, the final brain cell in chat says Tin Roof is a popular one. I'm gonna have to go there next year. I had no idea. Um, so. it was very fun. So I don't know. know if I've ever heard of the tent roof, and I live in Indy. Well, you're it's, gonna... it's around the corner from the karaoke place that has a beaver in its name. That. <laughs> oh, Wild Beaver Saloon. Yeah, that one. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no! Like I love this so much. Um, Look, I, I went to that in college. <laughs> yeah. Also, Sean, again, because this was our first time meeting and everything. Um, and so mm -hmm. next year I'm going to uh, just, well, I, I hope to still be doing more of the same, but uh, you know, in my, in my other time, I'm just going to be asking for Rex from the city. You know, now that I know that you are a local, it's like, we got an inside track, you know? So good. Maybe Rex. That's not a problem. Yeah. Absolutely. Hopefully yeah. I don't like, you know, not know things like the tin roof and, and be like, I don't know much about well, what's in Indy, apparently. For you, we won't either. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I knew two places. <laughs> I knew my hotel and the convention center. That's it. Right. That was it. Everything else was I really need to know. <laughs> that well as evidence to that because I am a very tired person. I'm an introvert. So I was like in my games and then I went to my hotel room and that's like it until the night of the party. Right. And I was like, I can do it. And Chris is like, Yes, you can do it. I was like, I can do it. And it was the only night we went out, actually. I don't guys wow. we were beat. I yeah. know I seem extra I'm not. I need rest. And, and that night there was there's a giant statue in the middle of the city. Do you know what that statue is, Sean? It's beautiful. I, I was like, who's, who's this lady? On the circle? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is the Indiana um, Sailors and Soldiers Monument. Um, oh. I forget who is the person on it. It's been a while. Like, I used to know lovely. this stuff, and then, like, I just... Yeah, I mean, it, it's like when people think of Indianapolis or or people from Indianapolis, like everybody knows the circle because it's like in the middle of downtown. Oh, yeah. It's a statue. And it's you know, people huge. You know, drive around. It's huge. Um, it's I mean, and it has a history too. Like the history is really fascinating with it as well too. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's um, that we have the Indianapolis Zoo that's actually not far from the convention center at all whatsoever, and it's a fantastic zoo. Oh yeah, um, we yeah, there's tripping that your zoo is like in yeah. downtown, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Also, the yeah, final it, brain it, like, cell. You could literally walk there from, from the convention center if you wanted to. Incredible. The final brain cell is also a local indie person, by the way. So, oh, you know, cool. tabletop. If you... Oh, we'll have to. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are both in the Discord channel, which is going to be my little real, you know, I you, you got to mark it at the three quarter point. We're almost done. But um, but uh, <laughs> that was a great time to note, you know, follow, follow the Discord, yeah. follow our YouTube and everything. If you like this stuff and if you want to talk to Sean's in our Discord. Jordan's in there now. Like, like we got, uh, we've tricked all of our friends into being there. So if you want to ask us about what's it like to see a giant lady in the middle of the city, again, a statue, um, we have that answer for you. Um, but, well, okay, so 
I figure the last thing before we close out again, I don't want to keep people too late, is is there any like standout moment for you guys from Gen Con that we haven't already talked about? I know we stole the thunder for some of us, but um, it could be anything. It could be something you ate or, um, you know, like just the general vibe. What is the thing, if you were well, elevator I'm... pitching Gen Con to people, what is it? We're going to use, by the way, we're using dagger heart rules. There's no initiative system. No one goes first. Jump in when you want. <laughs> Everybody just jump in, right? Yeah. Um, hmm. I I will say this is not necessarily a pitch, but for me, so I, I get to go to Gen Con with my son. I take him Saturday and Sunday because he's in school on Thursday and Friday of that week. Um so I do what I want on Thursday and Friday, you know, as an adult. And then I spend Saturday and Sunday taking him to enjoy Gen Con and do like what he wants to do. And he loves like checking out the different games, the different dice sets. Um, he's been doing the Pokemon building battle stuff. Um, he's also grown to love Critical Role because I've talked about it so much that he knows like who Matt Mercer is and like, you know, how do you, the phrase, how do you want to do this and all that. Um, and so he's really, you know, become a, a fan of Critical World without ever seeing their stuff because, you know, I don't let him watch their stuff since it's not age appropriate. Um, and we went through Artist Alley. So they have like different parts in the vendor hall. And there's an uh, area there called Artist Alley where people sell like their art. Um, you know, I think uh, writers are there. I don't know if it's part of Artist Alley or if it's like a writer's row. I think it might be like specifically for authors and all that. Um, so we're going down artist alley and I usually don't cause I don't like go and buy art necessarily, but we just went through there, you know, just to kind of walk through and we came by a booth and, you know, long story short, we found a, a person named Crystal Sully, who is the official artist for Dungeons and Dragons. She's actually drew some art for the monster manuals coming out but also the official artist for Critical Role as well, too. Mm -hmm. And Riley, my son, just, like, you know, lost his mind. He thought that was the coolest thing ever. Uh, she had some amazing artwork that was just, like, fantastic. Like, I just told her, it's like, I'm not a fan of, like, getting art and stuff like that. I was like, but this is, you know, by, like, by and large, like, phenomenal. Like, it's it's been some of my favorite art. So we were able to get some of her art that she sold that's Dungeons & Dragons, but she also gave... Uh, my son, because we had such a good conversation with her about Critical Role and all that, she threw in a drawing that she made of one of the dragons from Mighty Nine. And my son's like, this is mine. I want it in my room. And so now it's hanging in his room. And he's just like, he's in cloud nine with that. He thought that was the coolest thing. So for me, that was like my favorite part of Gen Con this year was having that experience with him. That is so beautiful. That's so cool. You shared those in That's the Discord. Amazing. They were gorgeous. But that I think that yeah. really does like kind of speak to again the energy there of like anywhere else you go they're like jacking up the prices and it's like no why would i give you it? but you love something here and we're all family in indie for gen con and it's just here yeah you know? oh that's beautiful yeah thank yeah. you sean that yeah. was beautiful chris Jordan, yeah, thank you. One of you guys? yeah i actually saw sean i think on the last day what, taking his son through the hall when me and jordan were running games so that's cool to like <laughs> things a little extra uh, <laughs> uh canon in my head there i say for me um my background's music i was a musician my whole life growing up and i would play in bands and stuff and when you go to like festivals uh it's cool to see like tens of thousands of people all be on the same wavelength i'll be like doing the same thing and enjoying the same thing together. And there's just like a certain um, frequency that everybody is on together. And I think that's what kind of like my takeaway from Gen Con is it's cool to be just doing something with that amount of people together. Uh, everyone is in a good mood. Uh, everybody is like very joyous. It, it, mm -hmm. Yeah, hard to describe, but you know, it, no, or like sports, right? If you're watching a playoff game, everyone's cheering for the same team. It's that kind of thing. It's just so rare yeah. that you get to be around people that wholeheartedly enough to spend money and time and time off work all are there gathered in one place in a city that is, I, I'm not going to say worshiping, but definitely lighting candles to that hobby. It is a beautiful atmosphere. Gen Con is a great place. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
Jordan, what about you? I think stand out for me for Gen Con, uh, besides besides the energy of everything, of everyone being around and here and hyped for the same thing, which is something that uh, it's a reason why I urge people people to still go to live theater rather than uh, only consume stories through TV and movies is because there's something different when it's live, when you're all there. Uh, but I am also a little gremlin. And so I love like going through artist alley and all that and trinkets. And like, you know, I bought, I brought a bunch of badge ribbons that said I dance, I dance with Will cause I was cosplaying as Will for most of the con. And so like being able to like trade badge ribbons with people and just like give people little trinkets. Like I bought a bunch of sets of dice at the con that were just like little just like sets of chess x dice and i would just like trinket trade those with people and stuff and like the little gremlin in me is just like <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh my god yes absolutely this stuff the like you know you talk to so many people that are coming home from gen con and we're all like nobody's rich these days guys groceries are crazy but we're all like mm -hmm. how much did you spend on just dice it's like <laughs> 400 <laughs> like like you know but it's just it's your joy and it's there and it's oh it's so beautiful that was so mm -hmm. nice jordan man i've i've asked you guys questions but i was so enamored of listening to you guys that i haven't really thought of um mine um guys <laughs> in chat like if you're here if you're watching this on youtube later this really makes my nerd heart so warm please leave a comment and say what you liked or join our discord and nerd out with me um you know my personal definition of a nerd is just someone that is passionate about something and is unafraid to talk about it you're shamed so much for talking really excitedly about your passions and i think that some people it's like well everybody shames me for this passion so you just get a thick skin and i think that's what a nerd to me is so anybody that wants to share their experiences um just because i guess I had so many favorite things, but I'm going to, we have a Kari from my tables in, and um, so we're a channel that talks about Dagger Heart. So I'm going to talk about Dagger Heart. I'm going to say my, my favorite thing was getting to see, I've always wanted to be there at the start of something and I think that due to timing or whatever I just never have quite gotten there and I've always been like there after and I'm like oh I wish I was there in the beginnings of it um I think for me I'm just so excited about getting to see the excitement behind Daggerheart I cannot tell you how excited people were the number of people that were like there outside of the conference rooms hoping that maybe someone was late or didn't show so that they could get a table. All of my GMs who were there with me, y'all all did such a fantastic job. And it shows because everybody that left was just chittering, truly so excited about it. And it's so easy to like not nail it with Tabletop RPG. You guys did tremendous job and i think it was such a service to daggerheart tabletop rpg games gen con that you guys were all there being you know incredible and um and and straight up kari uh so so incredible final brain cell again in chat one of my Kari's at table, who is the giant, just lovely woman who guardians and shields at her party. That to me is such the nature of Gen Con is that like being there for each other and shouldering the burden of the world being hard and terrible and scary lately and everything. So thank you guys for playing with us and, um, and, and Hitman, you know, Steven from our channel in chat saying dagger heart and, and the no use from Duckburg. I'm trying super hard not to cry right here because I also, I think that the, the final brain cell might have seen me cry at my table, but, uh, because it was just a beautiful story and I did, I, you know, I did just, I, I love tabletop and it was it was a wonderful time. Y'all all have fun. I had a blast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's do it again. Oh yeah. yeah. We're doing it again <laughs> next year, right guys? <laughs> yep. <laughs> if I can't afford it. Yeah. Um yeah. Listen, yeah. Uh, get in with that envoy. Again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, one last time, you know, let's go around for anybody who joined in late. Um 
Sean, do you want to pitch your channel or anything that you have upcoming? Yeah. So um, everything on my social is just, you know, at Crit Hit the Giant. And I have um, a blog, CritHitTheGiant.com, um, and YouTube channel. Things I have coming up. I'm going to be at Game Hole Con in uh, Madison, Wisconsin in October. Um, and then on my YouTube channel, I will be doing a just kind of review of the barbarian class of 2024 just kind of my thoughts on it and uh oh and then next week i'm actually going to D in the castle so that's Yo. gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> yeah put the pictures in the discord sean we're friends I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> who's your gm I will that. who's your gm uh beth the bard no <gasps> yep <laughs> if you if there are not so many pictures in that discord i'm coming to indianapolis i, will, I know where you live i can say that now i will do that don't worry yeah. join the join the discord if you want to see pictures of D and in a castle i've been out getting that and follow sean follow crit hit the giant he makes great stuff there's a reason that they believe that he's pressed because he is he just is guys yeah Thank no you. imposter syndrome for my friends Jordan, where can they find you? What are you working on? Yeah, so uh, on on most of the internet, just by myself, I am JM Dubs. I'm also just an actor, Jordan Michael Whidbey. Uh, the show that I co-produce is, uh, look, big name, looks really good in a playbill, so I'm using all my names. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the show that I co-produce is Dice Jailers. Uh, I've also been on, and here's the long list of the different things that I've guested on over the past while. You can find me in uh, my good buddy Ethan's show, Antiheroes Anonymous, uh, The Die is Cast Gaming. Uh, we're hopefully going to do a new show soon. Uh, also, uh, what are the other ones that I'm trying to remember off the top of my head that I usually do? Oh, I also do voice acting for a, uh, a different podcast called The Ugly Radio that uh, if you like ethereal space stories that are basically short stories uh, by usually local Seattle playwrights, but we're starting to branch out. Uh, the Ugly Radio. Uh, let's see. I said Antiheroes Anonymous already. Uh, also, if the if you're seeing this very soon after we put after this is posted or when it's live, uh, Unbalanced Encounters. Uh, there they have open auditions for their next set of people for seasons. Uh, I've sent my audition in. Uh, hopefully, you all will too, and we can play together. Uh, what other of my friends can I hype? <laughs> 100%, absolutely yeah listen and again this isn't the last time that we'll all be together but yeah like guys listen how impressive our friends are like it's just so good and then and you know we have we have less over here but me and chris you guys know us you we see us yeah. you see us every week <laughs> we do this um we uh we are the faint divinities we play and we talk about dagger heart and even though open beta is over we are not we are here we are playing we are talking we're doing more of this stuff and everything and we're so excited that you're here and steven is not on tonight hitman but he is in chat caps locking about dagger heart and the moment that i try to mark it he very much reminds me follow us follow us everywhere Go. <laughs> we, we're everywhere we're on twitter we're on youtube we're here on twitch um we're on discord if you like this stuff and you want to see us the kissy faces in chat yes steven absolutely he's he's here in spirit he had to work tonight but he's here in spirit um you know come find us and um and again we're we're just we're it's our favorite place to be is in love with other people about a thing because it's just a spiritual experience that i'm very passionate and philosophical about um and i feel very privileged that i get to have some time every week where i get to be part of that and get to have a little slice a little piece of that shiny stuff here so thank you guys so much and um and that's it thank you guys so much for coming out i really appreciate it um i'm gonna turn off the stream real quick but look at these dice that i got okay that's it look look i got them okay okay everybody bye i'm waving everybody wave everybody say bye 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 Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you oh. for everybody. Bye, everybody.